Right. During the midterm break, those traveling by train departed on the eve of half term after an early dinner and were dropped by the school bus at Kikuyu station at around 3 p.m. armed with concession forms that enabled students to travel by most means at a quarter of the normal fare. After me dropped at Kikuyu, I usually had enough time to dash to Gitaru and board a bus to the country bus station in Nairobi before Mumu and Bitini, the last bus bound for Emali and beyond departed at 4.30 p.m. and I would be home by 7.30 the same day, giving me an extra half time night at home. The couple of times that I missed the bus, I was able to get onto the Mombasa bound train at 6 p.m. at the Nairobi railway station and be home by 9 p.m. As happens often to testosterone, testosterone laden youth, I fell in love with a lovely lass from Kenyambo, about 10 or so kilometers past Kibwezi on the Mombasa to Nairobi Highway. She was a student at Mulven Girls School, and I was convinced she was my soulmate. I was then in A level, and she was in O level. And during one midterm that coincided with us, we agreed I visit her at her home in, at her home in Kinyambu. I sneaked from home on Sunday and boarded a matatu financed by Opio. God rest his soul, a Ugandan national teaching in a local secondary school who had gotten married to one of my cousins. The following day, Monday, I had to board a matatu very early in the morning from Kinyambu so as to get back home before my folks realized I had, was not around. It was also the day midterm was ending and I had to head back to school in time for the 6 p.m. parade. In the Matatu, I met a cousin heading to Emali to report the death by suicide of an uncle who had settled in Bange, the next town after Kinyambu, as one heads towards Mombasa. He requested me to convey the information to the relevant people in Emali, and then he disembarked. A great dilemma arose, how I could report this matter without letting out that I had journeyed to visit my girlfriend all the way in Kinyambu without informing anyone at home, and explain how I financed the trip. I got my cousin Peter to report, to tell his father, Mutisha, that he had heard of the news from someone who was in Amatatu heading to Nairobi from Kibwezi. At around 10 a.m., just as I was getting ready to leave, the younger brother of the, un the uncle who had passed on arrived at our shop and found my mother and uncle Mutisha and was surprised when they asked him, asked him to confirm the news. He then asked me pointedly why I had not passed on the information as given to me that morning at Kinyambu. It was a difficult one hour or so before I finally headed out to the state to catch transport back to school. Within a fairly short time, within a fairly short span of time, my infatuation with the Kenyambo beauty petered out and we moved our separate ways.